Hey, everybody. So uh, welcome to uh, part seven. We're going to talk about the cab block a lot in this uh, section. Um, this is one of the most powerful things that is available in a fractal um, in terms of shaping your sound and your tone. And there are lots of things to that you should grasp about how it works. Um, so I'm going to go through cab block and then I'm going to go through cab manager as well. Um, the first thing I want to do is just highlight a cab block and show you some of the different parts of it that you need to be aware of. The first is um, you've got a cab here and then you've got the under this effect type you can pick from four choices whether you want to have a, a mono ultra res cab, a mono normal res cab, which will work with ultra res or non ultra reses. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Or whether you want a stereo ultra res cab, which will let you do a left and a right. Uh, maybe you're doing studio recording um, or just a regular old stereo cab. Okay. So you get to pick those things out here. Um, in this particular, this is my Brown Sound Plexi uh, Naked Amps Tone Pack um, in the vintage pack section. It's not one of the classic rock ones. So I've picked this, fat, this cab here and I've I uh, haven't touched the delay on it, which can, the delay is really useful really when you're in, you operating in stereo um, and you want to put a slight delay from one side to the other for a kind of an effect. That's what that's useful for. I wouldn't do a delay really in a, just a regular old mono thing. But these two parameters are really important, this low cut and high cut. There's a real secret here to uh, taming your sounds and getting them to sit well in a mix or on stage. And generally speaking, that's because very few cabinets put out basically less than 100 hertz on the bottom. It turns to mud down there, and you're competing with bass guitars down there. Now, maybe if you're into metal, you like that low chug, and I totally get that. But for most guitar players, you could literally put your every cab that you do, you could put a low cut at 100. Most of the tone packs started to default to 40, and then a few of them I may dial in if I think the cab is particularly boomy. Um, but honestly, I could globally do this at 100 and they'd all sound pretty great. And then you've got a high cut here that you can use to cut out anything that's really uh, uh, high. M believe it or not, most guitar speaker cabs do not put much out over 6.5 hertz or 7 uh, kilohertz, uh, 6.5 kilohertz. Um, a lot of people leave this at 10 and that's okay. But if you've got a lot of sort of really airy high top that you don't like, this is a really good place to dial it back and I wouldn't be afraid to literally run it down here at you know seven eight even six and a half if it's really so harsh use this thing it's very very useful to dial that in and to control your overall lows and highs other than maybe using the global output uh, the global EQ output on the uh, that you can use from the front panel of the unit um, in the Axe 8 unlike the Axe FX which has microphone choices you can mix with cabs um, not just cabs that are have specific mics, but literally mics you can apply their EQs. The Axe 8 doesn't have that, um, but it still does have the proximity effect, which which you can do to dial in extra bass if you do want it. And this is where you set the frequency for where you want it. It defaults to 120. So if you find that you have set this up and you still want a little more thump on the bottom, a really good way to do it is to turn on the proximity. And usually a little bit goes a long way between one and two is usually pretty good. Some people like it up really high, but honestly, if you're playing live, you're going to find it gets pretty muddy pretty quick if you do that. So, um, but that's a useful tool for some of them. Um, for some of them, the IR is so good, you don't need to touch it. The IR is fine. I don't really use the filter slope. Um, I usually leave it, leave it on six. Um, and of course, the overall cab output level. And then if you're going to be doing stereo uh, cabs, which you want to be doing probably, Notice that you can do this uh, here. You can pan not just on this balance here, but by the cabs that you pick. So I can pan this one far left and this one far right. Usually something like this usually sounds pretty great. Um, if you want them to sort of blend as one thing, that's pretty good. Um, but you can pan them far, hard, left and right, and you can put a little delay in one of them if you want. Check that out for spread. So those are things you can do. The other thing is that when you have two of them, look at this as sort of a mixer. Maybe this one's a little uh, uh, darker um, or lighter. You can sort of pull one of them back a little bit compared to the other one to sort of fine-tune the mix. That's how you use these levels for the speakers is one way of doing it. This link button 
actually links the cabs so that whatever's in this top cab will show up in the bottom. And I'll show you what I mean. When I do that, look, it's now got the same cab in both. If you unlink it, um, then you can choose a, a different cab. We're going to go into this in a minute, uh, what that screen was a second ago. Uh, but that's what that is. Now, under the advanced things, you can see the low cut and the high cut. It's in here when you're on stereo ultra res, but if you're just the regular mono, there's no advance because it's already on the screen for you, which is really great. So let's take a look at the factory cabs that come with your Axe 8. And the way we do that is literally by clicking on this, this cab tab. You can certainly click them up and down to go through them, but I find the easiest way to do it is to click on it and it will bring up a big uh, menu, sort of like the preset menu. There's a slider bar down here that lets you go left and right. And they start with factory 01 oval and we'll go all the way up to 189. Um, if you are in a uh, Mark II following this video, yours will stop here at factory 132. You don't get 133 through uh, 189 in the factory because there wasn't memory for it. So you're probably wondering what those little colors are on some of these cabs. Well, I'm a big fan of greenbacks and I'm a big fan of v for, uh, vintage 30s. And I wanted to be able to find them very quickly instead of looking through rows and rows of numbers. And one of the cool things that the Axe FX does is it lets you pick a cab right here and then right click on it and I can assign a color to it. So this is like a greenback cab. So I use green for greenbacks and blue for V30s. So that's now color assigned right here. Now I can filter so that I only want to look at my greenbacks and they're all my greenbacks. I don't have to look at the whole thing. It's really great, great tool, really helpful. Or maybe I want to only find my V30s and there they all are. And I've gone through Yex amp manual and cab lists and things like that and called some of them out to make sure that I knew which was V30 and which was greenback. Some of them are not necessarily obvious. And if you go to none, they'll all pack back up again. So that's a really nice way you can flag the cabs that you like that are your go-to cabs. Look, I see this one. This is a greenback and I don't have it uh, coded. So I'm going to do that one right now. I should have done that. Um, here is a V30. Uh, but again, I may not use that one very much. So, But that's how you can assign uh, colors to the cabs, which is pretty great. Now, those are for factory cabs. Now, uh, you get user cabs that you get to load in, and we're going to talk about how to load them in in a little bit. I'm going to go to my user cabs. And of course, there are a lot of them, and they go all the way to 512. I've got some of my cab pack uh, IRs loaded up in here, a couple of things I've made here and there. Uh, the, this user one here is uh, one that comes with the Naked Amps Tone Pack. It's a red wires four mic blend. It really nails the first Jimi Hendrix album. Um, but you can also do this one with color as well. I haven't done it in mine because I'm constantly playing with these. So it's a nice, another way for you to find them. So you can go to your factories and filter by greens and you can go uh, here and find whatever ones you want as well. So pretty cool. And then last but not least, there's a scratch pad. And the scratch pad, there are four slots. And this is where if you're using Cab Lab uh, to mix IRs before you save them, they will use these cab slots and we'll see some more of that in a little bit later. Um, but these are not permanent. When you turn your unit off, these go away, what's ever in here, but it uses these as scratch memories when you're sort of auditioning cabs and trying to figure out how to use it. Now you can see everything if you click the all and it'll go from factory cabs into user cabs and even into scratch pads at the end. So that's another view. So pretty cool stuff. You can also search, let's say you want to find, um, the double verb cabs, right? So I click double. Well, there's all the double, uh, the, the Fender Twin Reverb cabs that are factory cabs that are in here. And so that's pretty cool. And it's going through factory cabs. It'll actually go through all of them. Let's try the Bluto, since the Bluto is one that I put in there. And there's the factory cab Bluto version, factory 11. And here are all my Bluto tone ones that I've made. So it looks at both factory and user. So that's a pretty cool pretty cool, useful tool uh, to do. You can also do it by cab size. Give me the one by 12s. Well, they're the one by 12s. Well, I really like uh, three by 10s or 10 inch speakers. Well, there's a Vibro King, you know. Um, so you can do 10 
And you can see some of them are 10s, but some of them have the word uh, 10 in them. But there you go, uh, a 10 like in the number. But that's just how you can use that tool to help find what you need pretty quick. Um, you can pin this so it doesn't move. Um, and we're going to talk about some other things here now. So we're back, and I pulled up this uh, Hey J uh, preset just for a second. Um, it's got my user cab in it that I made, the Jimmy one. And there's a whole video on how I made this IR and how, how to use Cab Lab to do that. You should check out on YouTube. So it's got the... So the point behind this is um, uh, how to use the uh, cab manager. So it's going to bring up a screen that's different than this one. And we're going to go here and go to Axe Manage Cabs. And it's looking now at my cabs, but this is a different kind of screen similar to the preset manager. So it's got a browser window over here, as you'll see. And so you can show and hide the browser window. Secondly, it's got an audition button where you can auto audition cabs. So if you'll notice back here, if you've got a cab set up to a user spot, then you can pick different user cabs to listen to it. So let's go into this cab uh, manage cabs and what's going to happen is it's going to pull up like this and we're going to open this up we're going to show the browser window where we're looking not at the cabs that are in our x8 already which is what these are but the cabs that are actually on our computer that we want to audition and maybe bring them into our user file so we go in and we open up a directory and I've got to find the directory here. Yes, and this is already set up for, again, they're, they're grayed out, but that's okay. When you click open, it will read them. This is a directory set up for some of my uh, fantastic two by 12s. So scan is complete. This particular, I found 171 cabs. It's very similar to the preset manager's operation in the prior video that I just did. Click okay, and then it'll populate here. And so one of my favorites is this Brit Big. It's just a killer cab. And um, right now, I like this particular one, but what's cool about this is that while we're listening to the user cab right now that's in the preset, if I click auto audition, it's gonna say, well, where do you want us to audition these to figure out what you like? And you can pick scratch pad one, two, three, or four, just usually even on one. If you've got stereo, it lets you do two sides. You can keep the current one in one, for example, if you've got it in stereo and then test one in the other, uh, other, other speaker. Okay, and again, it tells you here, it just modifies your current preset to audition, but they're temporary and they're not stored changes. This just lets you listen to it. So I'm going to do this. And so again, this is the factory preset cab. But I'm going to go for a nice greenback. So uh, let's say a 160A that I, from my preset pack. Mm, a little bright for me. I'm not crazy about that one. Let's try this one. A little closer, a little closer to what might be kind of cool. So, so this is a way you can audition cabs from a list to figure out what you like. Just kind of going through them. Um, you know, I've got a couple of Royers in here, which are pretty great. So, so a lot more bass in that. The Royers tend to have a lot of bass and some nice balance mids. The 160s are kind of your all-around sort of uh, balanced sort of mic. They can be a little bright depending on where they're placed. The 421s definitely push mids out. So they can be bright depending on where they are. I like them on the cone myself. And then, then of course, there's your ubiquitous 57s, which I like a little bit more towards the cone. Otherwise, they're kind of... So that's how you do it. Um, you know, there are room IRs that are going to sound funny because they're... They're a microphone that's across the room. 
Well, how would you use that, buddy? Well, you go into Cab Lab and you can blend that room mic in to the other mics and it adds an ambience to the sound that can be very, very cool. So some other things you can do very similar to uh, what we went over a little while ago in the preset manager in the prior video. You can mark these as favorites, you know, say, you know what, I really like this, um, this uh, uh, 121 uh, A3 and I want to make that as a favorite. I want to be able to find that, you know, so it puts a little star on it. And then, as I said earlier, you can also just show only the favorites and that would be the only one that would show. Any that you'd marked as favorites would. Um, I'm going to clear all the favorites. Um, you can sort them alphabetically or you can sort them in the order in which they were added which, you know, in this case, they're pretty similar because they were done alphabetically. But in other cases, it might change the order of it. Um, and you can uh, tell them which pads you want to push it to. Um, there's a little setup thing here that kind of walks you through that little thing we already saw a minute ago. It just pulls that menu up. So it's kind of nice. I'm not going to get into the IR processing modes. I just leave, you, leave, leave this on none. I don't fool with the IRs because they're already done when I get them. And I'll leave them in normal. Um, but what you want to know is why is this in italics and this in um, in uh, normal? Well, if it's in italics, it means it's an ultra res IR, which means it's going to have a little more clarity on the bottom end, something that Cliff developed. And if they're just in regular plain font without the italics, then they are just normal res. Now, again, you can use cabs either way. So, um, and then the operations for copying these are exactly the same as uh, we talked about before. Um, you literally can just grab a IR that you like. Here's a, uh, let's try that 2x12 again that I like. And I can just pop it over here and drop it in a slot and there it is. Now it's not saved until I hit save on the bottom. Okay, you see how it's in red here and there's a little dot by it and I have to click the save and once I do that, it will save it and that little dot will go away and now it's now in my memory. I can also grab, if I hit click one, hold a shift key and click another one, I can grab a whole set of them and pull all of them over, a whole group of them. I can pull them one by one if I want. So the other thing is that just like in the other video, um, let's get out of pulling these in and out. Um, you can also save your cab bank if you've got it the way you like. After you've maybe done your favorites, I would you need to save it so it saves the favorites. Um, you can um, also move them around inside just by grabbing them. So if I want to move this Gibtone over here and switch it with that one, I do that. And again, they swap is what they do. It doesn't overwrite it. It swaps it. And again, these are functions that were covered under Preset Manager. I can right-click on it. And I can cut it and I can paste it somewhere else. I can just copy it so there's a, one will stay there, but there'll be another version I can copy and paste somewhere else. I can clear it so it goes blank and gets, get rid of it. And remember, I could do a whole bunch of them that way. Um, if I wanted to, I could just kind of come down here and, you know, and uh, clear them all. And it would work to do that. So maybe you really like this Brit Big and you want to now save it in a special place. You can click this and you can export it and it'll bring up a dialog box of where do you want to save this and you of course would try and find a good cab folder and you tell it where you want to put it in your cabs for example and maybe you've got a little cab folder you can create you know fave cabs and then boom save it there um, so you can also import it from that from uh, individual ones so you don't have to use FractalBot to do it you can do it through here which is really great um, and again, you can, you know, do other functions as well with this. So that's a pretty good overview of how the cab preset manager works. It's very, very useful. Um, particularly if you've got a lot of cabs, you're trying to arrange, um, another little trick while I've got you here is notice that this has high ultra res, but this is not an ultra res IR. Look at the CPU up here at 51. I think this will work on this one. If I go to ultra res, from normal res, usually the CPU, the CPU would go down a little lower. So let's say that we had a Bluto in here and it was a high one, 55% CPU. But if I you go to normal res, I'll still get most of the Bluto sound, but look how much CPU I saved. 
5%. That's a lot on the Axe 8, particularly when you have a lot of effects going on in it. So um, when you've got ultra res, if you uh, IR is in there and you want to try and save some CPU for other reasons, it's okay to go from ult high ultra res here to normal res. You'll save some CPU. It won't change the sound that much. It's just a little bit of bottom definition thing. So that's another little tip for you. So a few more things before we go. Um, first is to understand the difference between a system uh, exclusive file and an I IR impulse response file. Impulse response uh, files that come in cab packs end in .ir and therefore use in cab lab. Uh, that's where you use those files. If you're trying to put a file directly into your Axe 8 or your Axe FX, you want to use the files that are uh, .syx for system exclusive. And one of the cool things is that in this cab uh, thing that we were doing earlier, let's take this, um, this Brit big. If I run cab uh, manager here and I've got this window open, I literally can just pull this right to a user spot as an S6 SYX file and it'll write it. And um, it'll write it right on there. But watch what happens if I try and do the exact same thing with an IR file. It's going to give me a little error message saying, uh-uh, we don't want you to do that that way. So understand the difference between those things. Um, you know, uh, in my particular cab packs, I like to do some ready-made mixes for each one of them so you don't have to struggle a lot. There, there's an IR if you want to fool with them in cab lab, but these can be pulled right in just like this, and these will be really great sounding in any cab pack that, that I produce uh, right out the bat. I've already got those ready for you to go. And then I've also got individual my picks for each individual mic shot. So you don't have to go through the entire, you know, hundreds and hundreds of uh, IRs. There's a lot that are ready to go there. So that's one thing I wanted to show. Another thing is looking at the cab lock. Um, I like to put a looper in front of it. If my accent will let me. And play some chords. And literally, you go to the factory cabs. And, you know, if you know if you think it's a 2x12 or whatever, just start clicking through them while the looper's going, while the cab's playing. And, and you'll be surprised what you may like or not like. You may not like 20 of them, but one of them that you might have never thought of sounds awesome. Remember that the cab is, is very essential to the sound of what the amp is doing. It's half the sound. It's... Um, it's basically the big EQ filter that's boosting and, 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 uh, and attenuating different frequencies coming out of the amp. We all know that if you turn this cab block off and listen to the amp without a cab, it sounds pretty horrible, right? So that should tell you how important the cabs are. Um, the other thing, when you, go, when you start to do this stuff uh, a lot, like I've done for the last seven plus years, yeah, you start to learn, you know, which which of the factory IRs are a little brighter, which are more balanced, which ones are a little darker. And sometimes people make the mistake of only going with the balanced ones and saying, that's what I like. I'm just doing it direct. But I will tell you that I have pretty good results for doing things like taking uh, an amp that may be really bright and then putting something like the Lurks in there, which is a darker sounding IR to sort of compensate or an amp that may be very dark and taking a very bright IR. For example, I like the, um, it's in here in the fa uh, factory, the HB55, uh, uh, which most people would find pretty shrill by itself. This is sort of a, to me, a Jimmy Page kind of a crisp top end speaker. And the other thing I find is that putting these in a stereo and maybe moving the levels just a little bit for one or the other to sort of balance them out can make these things sound phenomenal, can make them sound really, really terrific. You know, you can add proximity for individually if you want, but you've got sort of like adding an SM57 and a Royer 121. Um, so definitely spend some time with the factory cabs that are in there. They're really pretty great um, and you can get really great sounds by combining them and of course once you find a combination like this that you like you can come to the block library and you can save it as one of your favorite cabs you know my new blended fave cab and then it will always pull up exactly the way that you saved it and you can use it in other presets so that's another trick for you i hope this was helpful